You are Excellency the Governor of Imo State. And Your Excellency the Governor of Yobe State. Ministers and Minister of Police Affairs, especially. Members of the Federal Executive Council. Chairmen and members of Police Service Commission. Service Chiefs and Inspector General of Police. Representative of the Chairman, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, traditional rulers, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to attend this event at the Special Guest of Honor. The conference and retreat for senior police officers at this stage is our nation's democratic progress in both timely and significant. This conference and retreat will enable us to discuss issues relating to the role and capacity of the Nigerian police being the lead agency in the electoral and internal security process towards ensuring a peaceful, secure, free, and credible 2023 general elections. It, is also, it also provides a unique opportunity to brainstorm on fast ways to guarantee a stable internal security space in the countdown to the electoral transition exercise. In my address, it's the 72nd session of the United Nations General Assembly on the 19th September 2017, I made it very clear that our faith in democracy remains firm and unshaken. In reinforcing my unwavering commitment to democratic values and strong democratic institutions to govern the process during my farewell speech at the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly on the 21st of September 2022. I notice that we have invested heavily in strengthening our framework for free and fair election. And hence, I reaffirm on the global stage that as President, I have set the goal that one of the enduring legacies I would like to leave is to entrench a process of free, fair, transparent, and credible election through which Nigerians elect leaders of their choice. Nigerians elect leaders of their choice. I also noted that it has been my experience that a democratic culture provide a government with the legitimacy it needs to deliver positive change. I remain steadfast to these commitments. This informs my disposition to strengthen the legal framework and to enrich our legal processes as exemplified by my assenting to the amended 2022 election bill on the 22nd of February this year, 2022. Despite these initiatives, it is recognized that no nation advances its democracy and attains its socio-economic and developmental goals without an effective policing system. There must, therefore, come to a time in life of a nation when the people and government must, in national security interest, frontally address challenges that have historically been negatively impacting on public trust, partnership, and institutional efficiency of the policing agency. For us, as a government and nation, we recognize that the time is now. It is in cognizance of this that our administration has prioritized 
critical reforms in the Nigerian police force in order to reposition it to effectively fulfill its internal security and democratic governance mandates in conjunction with the Independent National Electoral Commission and other strategic agencies in the electoral process. In furtherance of this, I assented to the Nigerian Police Trust Fund Bill to provide legal framework for an enhanced funding regime for the force. Similarly, I assented to the Nigerian Police Academy Bill to grant statutory recognition to the institution and position it effectively to attain its young and futuristic manpower development programs. I, I also approved a new and befitting salary and welfare regime that aligns the, the remuneration of police personnel to dictates of their critical functions, while also approving and releasing funds to support the recruitment of 10,000 police constables annually to address the wide manpower gap in the force. In addition, I approve the adoption of the community policy model as the internal security strategy of the country with requisite funds released to implement the initiative. Social intervention funds to address critical operational and capacity development initiatives of the force were also approved as part of the re-engineering project of the force, the federal government is currently working with some development partners towards strengthening the police reform agenda. My desire is to restore the primacy of the police towards rebuilding public trust and professionalism. My vision is also to bequeath to the nation a police force that is not only modernized but well-funded, suitably equipped and appropriately reorientated to effectively police our democracy and guarantee a stable internal security order under a citizen-led, technology-driven, rule of law guided by intelligence-based policing models. I am inspired that by our reform initiatives, we have laid a solid foundation towards the restoration of the operational competence and professional efficiency of the police. I am also pleased to note that our police, in conformity to my democratic visions and in manifestation of the positive impact of these reforms have in recent times been demonstrating high professional, ethical, and operational standards as, as reflected in their performances in internal security operations and during the recent off-season electoral outings in Edo, Anambra, Ekiti, and Ocean States. For this, I commend the force leadership and all officers of the force and wish to charge you all to continue to project a force that will remain apolitical, apolitical, firm, and loyal to our democratic values in the countdown to the 2023 general elections. It is only by so doing that our police can truly be defined as not just the true friends of the citizens, but as dependable and trustworthy partners in the drive to advance our democratic journey. As I have often observed, elections are local 
and it's only when the votes truly count that the faith of the students in the democratic process can be demonstrated and government legitimacy assured. This can best be guaranteed through a well policy election and security operation that is impartial, firm, and professional. This is what, on this day and at this occasion, I charge the Nigeria Police Force to deliver to the nation during the 2023 general elections. I therefore task the Inspector General of Police to sustain his leadership standards that will guarantee a level playing field and secure public space for the citizens to freely exercise their franchise and for the outcome of elections to be a true reflection of the people's choices. I offer my full assurances of support and encouragement in this process. I am, a full, I am fully aware of all steps being taken by the Inspector General of Police to adequately prepare personnel of the force for the general elections, including the recently concluded geopolitical election security management workshop, as well as the ongoing operational plans ahead of the exercise. It is my expectation that force will maximize the opportunity of this conference and reach it to achieve two critical goals. First, to review the current and evolving internal security threats as they may impact on a peaceful and successful election. Second, to perfect operational plans that will guarantee a credible outcome in the 2023 general elections. I now wish to congratulate and commend the Inspector General of Police for providing focused, courageous, and visionary leadership for the Nigeria Police. <laughs> and for striving assiduously to stabilize the internal security order. I also commend the Imo State Governor for his exemplary support to the federal government on security governance as further exemplified by the hosting of this event. <laughs> it is now my honor to declare this conference and retreat to senior police officers open. I wish you a road in engagement. Thank you for your attention and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.